coming up, a curb or a doorstep can stop these guys cold. See what happens when we drop them on a mountaintop in the middle of nowhere. One person's uncrossable boundary is where someone else's life begins. We've seen people pushing their limits, encourage and skill and sheer enjoyment of beautiful places. And now, the most amazing adventure story of them all. I had an idea to, to round up some of the best model skiers in the world and uh, go for a heli ski trip. And uh, lo and behold, here we are in Sun Valley. I'm not angry about the accident. What I'm angry at is the way society perceives what we do. And I'm angry at the fact that we are still, in some instances, looked upon as lesser. Society seems to want to keep me here. I want to get up here. You ready? Nice. JD, you stoked? Good, you awesome? Uh -huh. Woo! There's no uh, magical fairy that comes along and taps you on the head after you get hurt, uh, you know, making you into a new person or a different person. Uh, I'm doing the same kind of stuff now that I would have been doing if I was standing up. Um, I'm Bill, but I sit down more. Meet three of the most extraordinary athletes on the planet. They made their mark while doing just what you're doing right now, sitting on your butt. They're about to ski terrain that would scare the rest of us back to the bunny slope. And they're doing it without two of the best friends most any skier has, their legs. The John Davis story had a car accident in 1989. It was late at night, the roads weren't that good, it was kind of poor visibility to the whole thing. and. Um, you know, next thing we you know, we were in an accident. From that day forward, I, uh, I started leading a new life. If you feel like shedding tears, go chop an onion. The way to feel around these guys is impressed and inspired. I don't see myself as having, you know, this huge problem. I see myself every day as dealing with something just like everyone else does, dealing with the situation that they were given. John Davis has been a paraplegic for 10 of his 28 years. Today, he and two buddies are going deep into Idaho high country. There are no trails, no signs, no ski patrol, and there's no way in or out but a chopper. But all these no's add up to one big yes. This is something that really has never been done, and I, I like being a pioneer. I like being the first to go and do things. And in the year 2000, to be a pioneer and to be a trailblazer is uh, its something of a, a rarity. The story of Davis and his friends makes a powerful point. In the game of life, the rules can change when you least expect it. Second chances, uh, they only come once in a lifetime. If you get one, go 100%. Real players like these guys never fold. Growing up, John Davis was the prototypical California kid, a suburban yard ape who played until the dinner bell rang. I love to surf, I love the mountain bike, I love to skateboard and do all the things that, you know, a normal, active kid's gonna do. After his accident, John's live to play, play to live side told self-pity to take a walk. In paraplegic terms, he was quick to overcome. Overcoming is definitely a rite of passage. I really didn't have a downtime. I didn't have a time where uh, where things really hit me in a, in a way that I just uh, in, you know wanted to end it all or, or wanted to give up. Before John hit the slopes, he hit the dirt. In 1990, just out of the hospital, he had found a substitute for his beloved mountain bike. He created and dominated a new form of off-road racing. Running on four wheels instead of two, John cleaned the clocks of so-called able-bodied cyclists. In the off-season, John found time to plop himself into a monoski, 
the vehicle used by paraplegic skiers. The mono ski is uh, the adaptive equipment that allows me to ski. You can think of this as your femur bone running down to your knee joint, coming down to your thigh, shin, and into your foot, into the boot, locks into a regular binding. Uh, my outriggers, the ski on the bottom, you pull, flips down. When you're skiing perfectly, uh, these will just be skimming off the ground. This machine right here allows me to attain speeds of over 70 miles an hour, take big air, jump powder, um, anything, uh, anything that the mountain can throw at me. At first, John on a monoski was about as graceful as a ballerina in galoshes. Enter Bill Boness. At the time, he was monoskiing's reigning champion. Today, he remains a dominant presence as the sports guru. I was riding up the chairlift and I was just looking down at this contraption going, man, I'm never gonna be able to ski this thing good. I looked over to a place called the Three Sisters. Lo and behold, there was Bones. Screaming down through the powder, shooting over his head. My seasons are 120 days plus, so you know, one of those years is somebody else's lifetime of skiing. Bill Boness has been paralyzed for 23 of his 41 years. Like John, he was injured in a car crash. It's a, uh, a form of loss, as if anybody, whether they lost a family member or if you lose a part of your body, you go through a grieving process. And I went through that pretty quickly. Um, at the accident site, I'd had enough first aid and emergency background that I knew it had really screwed up. And uh, so I think the denial was already out the door even before the dust settled at the car scene. He opened John's eyes to the unexpected possibilities both on and off the slopes. The more freedom you have, the more mobility you have, obviously the more choices you can make about your life. The monoski is just another choice, it's that choice to really go in the outdoors, you can go thick into the woods, thick into places where uh, you normally wouldn't have access to being a wheelchair user. Inspired by Bill, John quickly became a double black diamond skier. And after just four years, he made the U.S. ski team. When you're bombing down a hill and you're making better turns and cleaner turns than 90% of the people on the mountain, it's a great feeling. It's stuff that makes me feel just normal, it makes me feel like I'm the same guy I was before. John's gift to his mentor is today's trip. A big rad apple for John's favorite teacher. Yeah, I'm, I'm really stoked about the opportunity to do this. You know, we're going to be visiting places uh, hills, mountains that there's no way I could have gotten to. While John Davis and Bill Boness were tearing up the mountain, a young Canadian daredevil named Stacy Kohut was making his own kind of mark. Since I was five years old, skiing, motocross, BMX, you name it. Yeah, well, I mean, all my friends, we have relied heavily on our bodies. We skateboarded vert, we mountain biked, we BMX raced. But the big air that Stacy craved let him down hard. The ultimate childhood dream, the super loop on a swing set, I was attempting to do a 360. I got to about the 11.30, 12 o'clock position, just as I was about to come over. The board that I was standing on slacked out and flipped over, and all I saw was blue sky, and those couple seconds it took to hit the ground felt like forever. To have the use of my legs go, I've often described it as a twisted wake. It was almost like a prolonged funeral with me and my friends mourning the fact that I wasn't going to be able to do these things anymore. Stacy, just 21, was robbed of his skate punk status, and his leg strong mentors now failed to inspire him. So, what I began to do was look at um, my peers to meet Bill Boness at the Olympics, and for him just to say, you know, five, ten minutes worth of words just talking about what it's like to be in a chair, that's inspiration too. Stacy took the lessons of Bill and John to heart, but in his own aggro style. He got up to his rump and powder and thrashed the slopes like some high alpine hood rat. Stacy doesn't do anything slow. He doesn't do anything, anything halfway. It's, it's all or nothing. In temper and style, you couldn't find three guys more different. Bill, mountain-wise and comfortable in his skin. John, even keeled as his style of skiing. And Stacy, a rebel who found an unexpected cause, but still a rebel. Among them, they hold nine Paralympic medals. In a moment, JD, Bones, 
and the wild child Stacy strap into metal and plastic and send themselves over the edge. No paraplegic skier is done what these three are about to attempt. Out here, each skier will only go head to head with himself. With or without the use of your legs, a Helen Gone Mountain in Idaho is one scary place. I guess if you want like a dic dictionary definition of the word challenge in, in my mind, I guess it's something that encompasses things like fear and anxiety and anxiousness. And whether it's, you know, going down a flight of stairs in your wheelchair or skiing, you know, 1,500 feet vertical in a, in a sit ski, it's a challenge and it's, it's something to do and it's something to, to push yourself with. Ironic, isn't it? Break a leg out here and you'll need to be airlifted out. These wheelchair cowboys can't even feel their legs and they're begging to be airlifted in. There's something about being out on a mountain and knowing no limits, no boundaries. My only limitation is gravity and where it's going to take me. Backcountry and getting out there is a place where, uh, where we can excel and a place where we can, uh, we can find our, uh, our little utopia. We never have a chance to hike, so even just being up here, I mean, I'm not going to hike up here from the road. <laughs> what, are you crazy? That's a 20-hour journey on my hands and knees. <laughs> Okay, open that up as wide as you can. No, I'm not in. Not good. Heads up, we're going back up. I think that's as close as we're going to get. Good job, guys. We made it. Oh, way back. Okay, so if I could have some rigorous pose out, that would be muy bueno, man. JD, let's do it. I really want people to see uh, what I do in a different light, to see what my friends are doing in a different light. Uh, we're not hindered, we're not, uh, we don't have uh, limitations um, that, that a lot of people think that we have. When I was 16, I didn't think I'd live past 30. I'll be 30 next month. Um, I want to be skiing when I'm 55, 60 now. I think that some of the things I do may be considered inspirational, but it's by no means my purpose in life. Uh, I'm, I'm here to have a good time and uh, if somebody sees that as an inspiration, all the better. Able-bodied, disabled, blind, whatever, it's a great thing to, to celebrate the possibilities. John Davis, his mentor Bill Boness, and their protege Stacy Kohut will always get the most out of the mountains and out of life, even if they do it while sitting on their butts. Next week, No Boundaries goes to the hardest place of all, The Rock.